Welcome to Agenda Edina, a program summarizing the actions taken at City Hall that affect you most. I'm your host, Dorothea Marty. Garden Park on Hanson Road has been renamed to honor one of Edina's pioneer black families. Beverly Claiborne Yancey, known as BC, was one of the early black pioneers to farm near Edina Mills after the Civil War. BC was among the Edina Mills residents who helped bring about the succession of Edina from Richfield Township and its incorporation as an independent village in 1888. His wife Ellen founded Edina's first PTA and was its first president. Both BC and Ellen were early and active members of Edina's Minnehaha Grange. Among its 21 recommendations to the city, the Race and Equity Task Force asked that a public facility in the Grandview area be named after BC and Ellen for their significant contributions to Edina's history. The Human Rights and Relations and Park Commissions studied the issue this year and recommended Garden Park be named in honor of the family. We wanted a park that was well known and more importantly we wanted a park where there was a lot of drive-by or foot traffic so that people would see and be interested and learn about the Yancey family and maybe do a little research and say, oh gosh, why is this park named Yancey Park? And learn more about Edina's history. The city has begun the process to change the park name on documents and other materials. New park signage will be installed next year. The reception area of Edina City Hall will be remodeled after the election to improve the building's security. In 2019, a space needs study was conducted for Edina City Hall. Goals of the study were to determine ways to improve security and use the space more efficiently. Among the key findings of the study were a need to relocate and enlarge the reception desk, block public access to the office suites, and create a centralized place for walk-in customer service. BKV Group, the building's original architect, was hired to redesign the reception desk and determine ways to implement some of the other security improvements. Under the plans, the reception desk will be enlarged and moved out into the lobby. The new reception area will include additional workspaces for employees from other departments to assist with walk-in customers there rather than in their office areas. Glass walls will be added to create a more formal reception area for the public to wait for city staff members from other departments or scheduled meetings. Glass walls will also be added at the top of the second floor and a reception area added there. It's going to be an interesting change with the COVID restrictions that have been put on. Um, you know, we're going to have less in-person contact with people as they come into City Hall, but I think people are still going to be able to get that same service that they expect um, from the reception area as well as the departments. Uh, I think it's really going to provide an added level of security and uh, safe feeling for those that work in the building too. Construction will start after the general election and is expected to be complete before the end of the year. Administrative assistant Ruth Schmoll was hired by the Edina Fire Department as a teenager in 1975. At the time, she was only looking for a temporary part-time job. 45 years later, she sits down with Fire Chief Tom Schmitz to reflect on more than four decades of working for the city and for her community. I remember when I started in 1993 and came into the fire department, one of the first people I met was the administrative assistant, and that was Ruth Schmall. And Ruth had been around for a whole career when I started in 93. And here we are today in 2020 um, on the doorstep of her retirement of 45 years with the city and the fire department and uh, um, that's amazing. I was planning on just staying for six months. It was advertised as a, a part-time job, uh, full-time in six months, and I, I thought they'll like me and let me stay on part-time while, while I finish at the U. I still never intended to stay very long, and I'm, I'm astounded that the time has flown this fast, and it's 45 years, 45 years, that's like almost ridiculous. <laughs> 
So I, you know, I was going through some pictures and I came across a picture of you. Um, I think it's a pub ed event and you must be doing kitchen fire safety. You got a big pan with oh. big flames on it. And... No, that was <laughs> in my very early days of, you know, the late seventies when uh, a filming company came in and filmed my, you know, my dilemma of a stovetop fire. I had that look of uh, real terror on my face. So I thought that I might go places after, right, right. after doing that. <laughs> In the early days, it was, you were more a part of the actual responding team um, because we, they relied so heavily on, on you kind of writing the address down, handing it to them, making sure that they were heading in the right direction. And like I said, today it's, it's all it's being completely. done electronically. Yeah, I, I was so familiar with Edina having grown up here and riding my bike around that, that I pretty much know every street in the city. Yeah. And when we'd get a call, I could not only write the address down for the firefighters or paramedics, I could scribble real quickly you know, Tracy to Vernon, left yeah. left on Blake and up three blocks. I think one of the biggest parts of your job that people just um, probably didn't fully understand, um, certainly appreciated it, but was all of your, your work behind the scenes or out in front in public ed events. The annual open house was always, always a big deal. And, and most of my job, nobody sees. You know, firefighters get paid. A lot of them have no idea how. And then, of course, we replaced our uh, our rescue boat yep. with the Ruth Ann. I was really surprised, pleasantly surprised, and and kind of honored that that they would name the boat after me. Um, it, it, to me, it's a really big deal. I don't think that many government employees have a piece of equipment named after them. And actually, as soon as this happened, I thought, well, now I can retire. And th then I must have forgotten to retire and, and stayed a few more years. November 1st and, and beyond, what are some of the things you think you're going to miss the most? Definitely the people, because that consistently over the course of my entire career, I've worked with such kind, considerate, dedicated people that are fun to be around and, and see on a daily basis. That's, that's what I'm really gonna miss. You know, one of the unique things about the fire service um, is that we're, we're a lot like a family. There's that whole interrelationship that, that you gain. And um, so in a sense, it's like you're going off to college right? You're stepping away from the family. You're not leaving the family. You're always to be a member of the family. Um, but you just won't be around every day. And, uh, but you're right. It is, it's the family aspect and, and all those relationships. And now at my age, I'm sure the people I'm leaving behind have, it feels like, uh, you know, mom selling the house and moving to Florida. I think, you know, when we think about 45 years, there's not a person in this fire department that does not know anything other than Ruth Schmall, right? So I think there's a level of apprehension come November 1st because all of a sudden there's, you know, Ruth is not up at her desk. But, you know, we're going to get through it. Um, everyone always does. And, but, uh, I, you know, that, that's the question. What are we going to do without Ruth? We'll get through it. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I feel feel like I'm quite a fixture, but sometimes it's uh, it's good to remodel. So, <laughs> in retirement, Schmall says she will look for ways to serve her community as a volunteer, but also looks forward to spending more time at the family cabin. The city of Edina continues to closely monitor the spread of the novel coronavirus and is keeping those who live and work here informed about COVID-19. Please visit edinamn.gov slash coronavirus for the latest updates or sign up to receive city extra emails or text messages.
Also a note regarding the upcoming holiday. Many traditional Halloween activities can be high risk for spreading viruses. While the city does not regulate Halloween activities such as trick-or-treating, it suggests residents follow guidance issued by the CDC. Thank you for watching this episode of Agenda Edina. I'm your host, Dorothea Marty.